Hey guys, happy Saturday. John with the New York Metro Weather. Hope you're doing well and having a great weekend. You might be looking at this image up on the screen, for valid for Tuesday morning, and saying, what the heck is that? And I'm here to provide you with some answers to what's going on. The first thing is, and just to shoot it straight, there is a potential for a major coastal storm from Monday afternoon into Tuesday across pretty much all of New England, the Northeast states. Uh, and even, you know, parts of the northern mid-Atlantic might be impacted by this in some way. But uh, there's a lot going on. This storm system is extremely complex. There is uh, quite a bit of uncertainty into exactly how it's going to play out. This is just one weather model. We're looking here at the European weather model uh, and obviously has snow not only throughout parts of New England, but also reaching down into northern New Jersey, parts of New York City on Tuesday morning. But exactly how we get here is super important to understand and for us to break down all the different possibilities. So let's go all the way back here. We'll look at this formation of this storm on Monday morning. So we're looking at the heights and the mid-levels of the atmosphere. Uh, and I know there's a lot of colors and stuff here, but don't get too overwhelmed with it. It's actually, you know, fairly simple. It, it, we're just looking at cyclonic relative vorticity. So what we want to watch are the key pieces uh, of this this system evolving. This is one part of it here over the Great Lakes. And then we have a second part here that's that's focused over parts of the Mid-Atlantic. And you'll watch this piece over the Great Lakes come down this way. And then our, our lead wave is right here, just about hitting the coast uh, on Monday evening, Monday afternoon and evening. And this piece, this uh, this upper level, mid, mid and upper level trough and vorticity is going to try to phase or merge with this piece off the mid-Atlantic coast. So if we take this over to the eastern U.S. view, you can watch that kind of happen here. So this is valid Monday evening. And watch how this piece comes down here and merges and captures this and pulls it back towards the coast, right? So now all of a sudden, we could probably even get a better view of this here from North Atlantic view. Uh, now all of a sudden, here's New York City here, right? Now all of a sudden you have a storm that's being curled up towards the coast as a result of this uh, phasing action and this capture. But um, it's not necessarily a clean phase. It's a little bit sloppy. You'll notice there's some of it still out here getting uh, shunted off to the east. Uh, and this is a very, very dynamic system backing up nationally and looking at this from a U.S. view or even North American view. You get a sense. Um, here's New York City down in this area. This phase with this disturbance here right here is going to be really really complex and this needs to phase with this and the models are going to have a really tough time with this and this is this is what's going on this is why we're seeing such a such a dramatic spread in model solutions so what does this look like at the surface right we we, we see what's going on aloft but what does this look like at the surface so we get this lead storm that develops. We talked about our lead wave, right? So here it is off the coast of the mid-Atlantic. And we know in the mid and upper levels that we have our, our next wave coming down here to phase with it. But in the meantime, our lead wave kind of is, is spreading out off to the east here. It's relatively weak. And you'll notice that it's actually raining in New York City and along the coast by Monday afternoon because the air mass in place ahead of the storm is not overly cold. So... What that means is we're going to be depending on the dynamics of this storm, dynamic cooling, the intensification of this system when that phase happens. We're going to be depending on the dynamics to get this over to snow in terms of winter weather potential. So anyway, what the models show is this system coming up here and strengthening. You can see the low pressure here arcing back towards our area. And once the dynamics start to go, that's when you wrap your cold air in. You know underneath you're phasing this, this northern disturbance in uh, and your cold dynamics start wrapping in. And the models uh, show... That depending on when that phase occurs, you could see some snow down into areas like northern New Jersey and New York City. It's not completely impossible. But the core of this winter weather event and this very strong developing coastal storm is likely going to be north of New York. If we flip over and look at the GFS model, right, we see the warmer air in place prior here on Monday afternoon and evening. And then the coastal storm develops just a little later than the European, right? It's out here further south and east. So all of your dynamics and your moisture, they're coming down here into New England. Uh, and that's where the GFS model says we're going to get, you know, the greatest amount of winter weather. If we look at uh, sort of the difference between the GFS and the European, the European is way back to the west. And that initial banding can wrap into the New York City area, into southeast New York, into northern New Jersey. Uh, and that's the difference between the European and the GFS model. Again, I'll flip over to the GFS so we can see it. And there, there you go. There you have the difference between these two models. The European is just a little bit further south uh, and, and quicker to develop the dynamics with this storm. So all this is to say that this is a very sensitive 
system and track. If we look at ensembles, we talked yesterday in our most recent video about the ensemble data and how valuable it is, right? Instead of just looking at, say, the European model or the GFS model, we can look at these ensembles, get an idea what the what the, the range of possibilities is. And 72 hours out, right? This is valid Tuesday morning. We have a range of hundreds of miles of possible locations for this storm. And we have one model, one ensemble, or a couple of suggesting this storm is going to be on Long Island or in Connecticut. And other ones are way out here in the Atlantic Ocean. And so your spread of possible locations of this low pressure is tremendously large at this point. And to be quite honest, it's fairly large by Monday evening. I mean, here we have the simulated low pressure on Monday evening. You can see we have still a range of hundreds of miles uh, on the ensemble data. So there's quite a long ways to go when it comes to really determining the impacts of this storm system, especially in the New York City area. But if we uh, l use a model blend just for now, the majority of the winter weather with this storm is likely to stay north of New York. Uh, we expect that, that the core of the snow is going to be up here in the higher elevations of New England with this storm system. Um, but it's not totally impossible. We need to watch really closely to see if we get this low pressure tucking in close to the coast any closer. Because if it does, and we get those dynamics and that phase happens earlier, this cold air and that dynamics will go to work and we could potentially get bands of snow rotating into parts of northern New Jersey, perhaps even the New York City metro, uh, and parts of northern Connecticut as well. So it's not out of the question that we see some winter weather impacts from this Monday to Tuesday. Regardless of that, it looks very likely that this is going to be a precipitation producer for the area because if we look at the model forecast, one to two inches of rain is fairly well agreed upon. Again, some of this might be snow. We'll have to see if we can get those atmospheric dynamics really cranking with this storm. But even if not, we're looking at the potential for heavy rain. The European model actually projecting between two and two and a half inches of precipitation in parts of northern New Jersey and the New York City metro. And in addition to that, I want to back up and show you guys this. Well, anytime you phase a big storm system like this, the dynamics go wild and you get a major storm. So we have a signal for big time winds in the uh, mid and low levels of the atmosphere. These are north and northeasterly winds wrapping around the surface low, right? So even looking at uh, down closer to the surface, your wind speeds get pretty gusty on Tuesday afternoon and then continuing into Tuesday night. So the core of those strong winds, again, probably going to be up here in New England, but it's not impossible that we get some strong northerly winds here uh, in parts of the New York City metro as well with the storm, in addition to the obvious threat uh, of rain and then eventually possibly a transition over to snow. I mean, if the European model is correct, we do have snow falling on Tuesday in New York, so we have to keep a close eye on this. Again, all possibilities are on the table anytime you have a range that is this wide on the latest model guidance. There is nothing set in, so in stone with this storm. We will continue to lean a little warmer and suggest that this, this system is going to feature a cold rain in New York and possibly quite a bit of it, uh, as well as strong north-northeasterly winds as this low pressure develops uh, towards the coast. But again, it is not out of the question that this, this system does produce uh, precipitation that changes over to snow across parts of New England, including New York City. We're going to have to keep a really, really close eye on this one as we move through the next uh, day or so. Really, we want to get a good look at the data tonight into Sunday morning. Uh, we want to see how things move, how things trend. Every model run seems to be jumping around like crazy. And again, looking at the ensembles, it's not a surprise because we have a spread of hundreds of miles. So uh, if you are traveling in the area Monday into Tuesday, I would keep an eye on this system. Again, this is not a, your regular old coastal storm. This is a strong storm system. There's quite a bit of upper level wind shear. There's quite a bit of uh, dynamics going on here with the mid, low, and upper level jets. Uh, so we could be looking at travel disruptions here regardless of what precipitation type falls in New York. The other thing is it's a broad system. It's affecting lots of New England. And so the possibility exists for those disruptions to, co to sort of cascade a little bit, uh, especially as you get up towards Hartford and Boston and interior New England as well. So uh, travel disruptions are looking more likely in New York. We're looking mostly at rain with the storm, but we're keeping an eye out on the back end of this system where if the dynamics do break and we do see this storm tuck in close to the coast, you see this low pressure here, if that does happen. We could be looking at a transition over to snow in New York, and it could uh, you know, become pretty dynamic on Tuesday morning and afternoon. So we're going to keep a close eye on that. We will have updates for you tonight. We'll post the latest model data. We'll be interacting with you, of course, as always. And then another video coming your way on Sunday 
morning. Have a great Saturday night, guys, and we'll be back with an update soon. Thanks for watching.